year, but it's true, and it's already gone to the printer. But that 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 little section, yeah. there, you know, is a big, you know, yeah. really could take up a half page because right. it's, it's very important that people understand that, regardless if we if the bond vote happens, it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. We have to move forward with the project. Yeah. So there there is no. Right. You know, wait till, later. wait till March to do another one. Right. You know, we can wait till March to do another one, but now we're going to lose our funding. Exactly. That's exactly uh, the first thing you're going to lose. You're going to lose your first place. Right. So what we'll have to do is. A little worried about that. Well, we'll have to, um, you know, I'll originally have drafted it, and then Tim and I looked it over, and um, we, you know, made a couple of changes, and you know, uh, we were there and on Thursday. But, you know, the other thing, too, is we can. I do. Zoe did a nice piece before, and we could, uh, and they're following the issue I'm not sure what do here. Uh, yeah, but we could talk to someone at the Herald who planned on doing, asking them to do another article. And that's something that Tim and I can certainly bring up. We could sit down and do an interview and bring up the fact that you know, if we do this again later, we're a good chance we can do this without our, without our final Because Because we all know how, you know, we could have two informational meetings here, which we will have. Uh -huh. And, you know, probably, 10% of the voting population are actually going to show up for these meetings. Yeah. So, it's, um, so well, a large majority are going to be what you're going to call uninformed voters that are going to go to the poll based on this handout. And what's scary is more so what their neighbor told them. Right. You know, and all it takes is that telephone, you know, yeah. it just, it starts here and then it ends up on how we don't need boys. You know, we or, have or, you know, so, I mean, that's the scare point. Well, we'll do another, um, I have done one recently we did a last week we did a Facebook um, and uh, website and tried to front porch form to do another posting to kind of keep it up and then clarify that issue about um, you know if we don't do it now we're probably going to lose our well, we will lose our financing so we'll focus on that and I just I just think it's however we get it through to the taxpayers is that. And that's a lot of Regardless, it has to move forward. So yeah. it's either going to be moving forward at a discounted price or at a full retail price. I'd like to think that anybody that showed up to vote would have uh, enough education on the subject to vote correctly. Yeah. That's what I'd like to believe. <laughs> they actually took time to so, so is this yeah. brochure, is this done? Okay. Yeah, it's going to the, it's at Spalding Press. We had to because we had to get it out in time for Monday. So we were running under the gun just doing it. I think if you could reword that paragraph in the strong Yeah, I, I can't now, I'm sorry. We had, to, we had to get it to her because she was kind enough to kind of squeeze us in and we're going to get it out. Um, and we had talked about um, maybe getting a, a couple of posters blown up yep, with this you. information on and yep. obviously have one outside the polling station where somebody can yep. you know, stop and read it, read it and have it or, or maybe the other one I was thinking of literally is maybe in the downtown area you could put it on like either that chalkboard or you know yeah. one of those boards down down there um, yeah. for people to read or yeah, we're just covered, so if we could yeah. do something like that. Okay. Or maybe, you know, maybe in the window of one of the shops is vacant or something, and that way people could stop and move I it. have it on my, um, <coughs> on my computer, a, a note about that, so I'll double it. Um, Penny is getting the paper in tomorrow to print these, um, so she's going to run them tomorrow, and um, so I can ask her to blow up a couple for us, like we talked about. That's not a problem. And um, certainly I'll can pick out an email to Zoe tomorrow, and maybe she can come down and do Tim and I. Get a <coughs> the paper next week or the week after before the. So, the only other thing I'm hearing is logistics. You know, the right. People kind of getting ahead, talking about yeah. how's it going to happen, sure. how's traffic going to be rooted. Yeah, and you know, there will be. Line, there's going to be the go arounds, there's going to be. Well, <coughs> there'll be one lane of traffic know. open, so yeah. the people will still be able to get down through Main Street. Um, had a conversation with Ryan Crowley about the laundromat, and even if we just have to do a drop off so people could drop off their laundry or, you know, we're going to try to accommodate that, of course. And um, there'll be one lane of traffic open. So we we'll won't be able to bring the big trucks down to those hardware or whatever. No, of course. 
Okay, well, like yep, absolutely. One lane of traffic will be open. Everybody will be able to get to the town. But he'll have, you know, he, he'll have to stop on this hardware and the load. So, right. You know how those things going to work. Yeah, and you know what? They'll accommodate them. I mean, this yeah. isn't their first rodeo. They've certainly been through that. Whoever the contractor is, is going to have to, you know, deal with that sort of stuff. But, um, you know, this, it'll still be business as usual. People will be, you know, obviously there won't be parking on one side of the street, of course. But, um, but we certainly will know a little more once um, we get a little further into, you know, the project that pieces goes out. Because then they'll have a schedule. Right now it's 60% complete. He had kind of sort of schedule, <clears throat> but as he gets a little closer, he'll have one. And we certainly will be articulating that to the downtown businesses and keeping them in the loop. And, the and, uh, uh, main is going to be on one side of the street. It's not going to be on yeah, the It's going to be on the, 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 the traffic lines. It's on the north side. It's in, it's in the parking. No, no. It's going to be in the north travel one. Yeah. 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 And you know, do I know there was at least one business that might you know close for a few days to take advantage of that so they can get some maintenance done, some things that they need done their business. And and um, but as we get further in and have the schedule, we we'll certainly will be sure to. to one thing that we may want to look at doing, just because there probably will be a fair amount of local traffic that is going to use the sand hill. Oh, I'm sure, yeah. Because we probably want it in any bid that we do. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to want to have that route maintenance. So what I mean by that is mm -hmm. you know, maybe the sand hill portion, we put some gravel down and have costs in there to maintain the gravel. And then maybe even, I mean, sand hill is getting kind of rough on the pavement, but maybe even if we gotta put something on there just because we're gonna have extra traffic, right? Mm -hmm. Well, and Sanders to Christian Hill is gonna be going around too. So there's gonna be some of those. We just, I guess we just gotta think of where, where are some people gonna buy around this. Mm -hmm. And we probably wanna well, what happened, have you it addressed either at the town level or in the bid level of mm -hmm. how we're gonna maintain those sections of the road for a year. Right, and it may be one of those things maybe that something for us to put extra money in the budget because it's not going to be extra money it's not going to be in the bond bill because we already know the bond amount that's going out so if that maintenance isn't in there when mm -hmm. we're doing our budget in the fall that's something we should consider because whether we're going to pay a contractor to do it or we're going to do it ourselves um that 2.8 million is set so you know what i mean chris the numbers well yeah sure it's not i mean it's depending on the bit yeah. right i just don't know if i can i, mean, I gotta think that you can figure in whatever Fifty or hundred grand worth of. Well, you can figure it in. The only thing is, is you can't figure it in now until the bond passes, and then it, then you've got an estimate of what your costs are going to be. Right. Yeah. But if it's before and it puts it over two point eight, you can't include it because it wasn't before. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll let Wayne know, Elliot, and see what I'm right. sure he's done that before. But that's a great point, Chris. I never thought about the you know as far as the detour or the traffic. So I have a problem. I just need to know. I'll let Wayne know that and you know have. Because a lot of times those are the things that get overlooked in a Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, I totally agree. It's the new routes that people take, and then mm -hmm. we're thinking, oh, how are we going to maintain well, those you, roads? you know, and if you've got uh, 18 wheelers trying to go over Sand Hill and, and Peabon, you know, it's going to be a problem. Well, it might be, it might well, be some updated signs that say no truck traffic. Exactly. Because, you know, you're going to have people finding ways around stuff. Yeah, updated signs. You know, yeah, 18 wheels going up over Camp Brook, you know, just because oh, the know. GPS tells them to go that way. Right, exactly. So we can, um, um, I made a note about that, yeah. update that. Do you have uh, a start or an end date in mind? The con next construction season, we'll have it up a bit, so we'll probably start, you know, as early as we can, my guess would be May, yeah. and then hopefully it'll be done by November. I mean, we're just, we're, I, I don't know yet because they're still, we're only at 60% complete in the design, but for us, we're basically just looking at the entire construction season. It will hopefully be less than that, but at this point, we don't know. It also depends who wins the bid, when maybe they can't start till a little bit later. I don't so know. it might be possibly as late as November. Absolutely. Yeah. Could be. You think you're my fourth? I am. I'm. <laughs> well, now you're reading really money. Yeah, that's all that we're away. I mean, know. there are some things that we can put into the contract about certain dates. And that, there are, and that's you what. You know, no work to yeah. exist at, on these dates. And that's what he said in here, too, because he talks about that. Plus, there's incentives or 
financial incentives that if they don't hit it, they get penalized in the contract. So for days, so yeah, liquidated damages. And yeah, things. absolutely. I, so. One thing that would be helpful um, for the information including anyways is. Um, I, mean, I like the section that talks about, you know, what is the projected impact of the current water rates. Mm -hmm. So showing that, you know, currently this is this is how much it is a quarter, and then by doing this work, this is what we see for an increase. Mm -hmm. But I think what would be what would be nice to have for the informational meeting, just to play the devil's advocate into that, is, you know, this is this is what we're proposing, what it's going to be with a uh, confirmed bond vote. But this is what it could be if we did pass the bond vote and we had to wait until March to do another bond vote and we lost financial, you know. Now we know there's, you know, from looking at this, that chances are what would happen is we would lose the 25, we could lose the 25% piece, right? Yeah. And then you could lose some of the galvanized pieces to that, too. You could because it's first come first. Right. But chances are we would probably still get 50%. Piece because of the qualifications. Yeah, the MHI. So I guess what would be interesting to see is what would rates look if you like? took out the 25% piece, you know, maybe that rate, you know, I don't know, I'm just throwing something. You know, instead of $13 a quarter, maybe that ends up being $30 a quarter. You know, just so that people can see if we don't act on this, this is how much more you might have to pay for this. Because I think a lot of people are going to say, well, $2.8 million, $2.8 million. And, right. But, but a lot more times we can, you know, 100, you know, whatever it is per quarter or per month is what we think about in our budgets and yeah. it might be something to have. Okay. Because again, we're in a position where it's, it's not like we're, we're saying, hey, we're, we want to update our system and there's no pushback from the state to do that. You know, we're in a different situation where the state's saying, listen, if you don't have things done by a certain date, we're going to have to step in and make you do something, right? So. They do remind us of that. Please. Yes, they do. Every chance they get, every time we see them. It's not for God. <laughs> no. He, he hammers it home every time. Okay, those are great. Go no, along. No you know, it seems like a big, it's like it's going to last all the year in the downtown merchant area. And it's really not. It's going from 68 Main Street to. 69 North Main Street. So you've got all the way from the Church Street Bridge to Bethel Mills. It really doesn't affect the downtown. And then you have from the telephone office all the way to the elderly housing. It's got to be part of the project, too. So when you take those two pieces out, you're not talking about the whole summer for just the downtown. Region. The impact isn't as long as it, as it may seem. When you talk about the long as it may be. And also, too, we'll know he'll working on a schedule so we'll have a better idea to with the informational I imagine or what he's really thinking so but it will be an impact because people will avoid oh yeah well, it, will, it will be an impact yes no doubt but if we have water we can't really go for it mm -hmm. right sure, yeah yeah it's true well and, and, and then that will affect property values and everything else exactly so yeah mm -hmm. but hopefully we'll we're also, I reached out to someone, um, Tim Raymond from the state did give me a name from someone in Waterbury, so I did reach out to them about, um, they had a bigger project done, I sent her an email to see about possible um, financial assistance maybe for any of the businesses in the downtown, and um, waiting to hear back from her, so I, I sent her an email out. So the area that's shown on here that needs to be worked on, is that the whole project is just um, <coughs> what you just said, Main Street, North Main Street, Livery Stable Road, et cetera, et cetera, that little, those few roads, that's it for the whole project? Yeah, it goes from the Grain Mill parking lot to Bethel Mills Driveway and then Livery, Avon, Cushing, yeah. Um, and then I have a specific question, and if you can't answer it yet, that's fine. Um, so I live on the top of Avon, and I'm just wondering, am I, is that road going to be you know, closed at some point? It will. It, it will. You know how narrow it is. I know where you live. 
it, it, it is going to be closed at some point, but it'll only be while they lay the line down. So. And will the road be repaired afterwards? Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. It'll so be repaired. It'll be better than it looks now? No. <laughs> well, we're actually trying to make it better than it is now. We have some other things that we're working on uh, for drainage and such. We'll see how that goes in the end. But it'll, as they work on it, they will refill in back as we go down the road. So it'll road. be gravel for yeah, the first it'll be gravel. Gravel. Should be passable every afternoon and oh. by the time you're home. It should be. We haven't yeah. seen this, the house schedule yet. Well, if it happens in the summer, it's not so bad. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. There is a parking lot down here. So. Right. I think, yeah, but hopefully that's not necessary. So. Any other questions or comments this evening? And we will have our. <coughs> Our first informational meeting will be next week. <coughs> so, um, six, right? six o'clock. Yeah, six o'clock Monday night will be our first of two, um, and then the following Monday uh, we will have an informational meeting uh, tagged on to the self Yeah. So. Bring your friends. <laughs> Come down so you can hear all about it. All right. Thanks, Conservation Commission. So we have um, first. You want to go through the two new members? That yes, we have. We're seeking approval for um, two new members: Danny Dover and um, William Chris Forrest. Um, they both have strengths in forest issues, and we're doing a lot with the town forest. So. Okay. Um, and uh, Katie O'Neill has resigned, and I believe that Jennifer Stomp will be taking at least the leave of absence for a while, for the birth of her second child, so um, that's what we're looking for. And Do I, you have uh, terms? I was looking in the town report, because I was, Yes, we do. Actually. And I wasn't in the town report, so I was mm -hmm. not, so I was really yeah. down with my question. Yeah. Yeah. So are they three years? Some are three and some are two. So what will Danny be? I'll have to look and see. Probably we should do one at two and one at three. But we have to okay. see what their preference is. So we can discuss that. But so yeah. Yeah. If you wouldn't mind, if you could send an email and let me know. And um, CC Kelly, if you know she's not out, but we're not report, I noticed that the Conservation Commission wasn't listed. No, we got left out again. I know. We need to put that in there. And Jim Charles in the and I wrote it on mine this time. I wrote it. as if we are not visible. <laughs> I know, exactly. And I hand wrote on mine this time, conservation. <laughs> so I wanted to know what your, what your terms were. So yeah. well, you do. Know, that'd be and uh, also, well, we're going to update on steel appearance territory here. Um, we are meeting with Steve Libby for our next meeting this Saturday at 428 Pleasant Street. It will be a conservation commission meeting, open meeting. Um, and Mary Russ will be there. And we will be talking about um, the next steps in the process and naming the site, um, possible uses, parking area, trails, benches. These are all question marks. A canoe access, and of course, the 50 foot buffer, which will be planted by the White River Partnership. So, all those so things. Has, has this paperwork been signed? Is the deal done? I know that the closing was completed on October 1st. Oh, okay. Yes. So, you'll end up having like a little ribbon ceremony at some point? We or? will at some point. We may even do something with the naming process, you know, get people involved. So, this is the first discussion of it's really going to happen. <laughs> and the town's portion hasn't happened yet, so um, I'll have to come at some point to sign. We haven't done that. I've been talking with her name, Mary Kipanjali, so. Two years. <laughs> so just to stay consistent with the appointments, um, so for Danny and, and Chris, we yes. need them each to send us a letter and interest. interest and probably with that letter you may want to one be the two year one be the three year yeah. so we have that and then okay. and then at the the 28th meeting as long as we have that we'll just 
you know, motion and, and, and yeah, there's, for there's no issues with putting them on board. It's just just to keep it. Um, so we'll we'll do that at you know the twenty eighth meeting we can appoint them as long as we get a something from them writing. Because we ran into that a while ago with some committee members that sat on a committee that maybe didn't intend to do that. So, you know. Um, because they do go on the, you know, website and you know, they, they should be appointed for a certain term and then so we'll we'll expect that at the next meeting. Wants to you want to take us through the brand new year? And don't forget, you'll need to um, make a motion to accept the resignation. Unless you're waiting for a letter for that. Yeah, we probably ought to have a letter for that, too. It's we'll there. I just need to Oh, the letter of resignation? It was an email. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I would entertain a motion to um, accept a letter of resignation for Katie O'Neill for the Conservation Commission. So moved. Second. Okay, all in favor? Uh, and Karen has a proposal. Yes, thank you. I have a request to cut some trees in the Brandier Town Forest. Um, it was around 12 trees to make two viewpoints up at the vista point at the end of the trail. Um, there are a few other trees going up the trail. There were some trees that had just fallen across the trail, and there was a pair of trees that had path uprooted and had gotten caught in another tree, but they're leaning right over the trail. Um, so we feel like we need to cut those just to keep the trail safe. And then up at the top, There's two spots that I was looking at for viewpoints. Each spot would be cutting around six trees to make viewpoints. The first one, as soon as you get to the plateau at the top, um, would look at the Bethel um, fire station, and then you go another 50 feet or so, and there's another viewpoint that would look at the school. I walked up there with A.J. Follinsby, the Windsor County Forester, on September 25th. And we, with his GPS, we um, marked out some boundaries. Because um, it's right at the top, right in the corner of the town boundaries. And all the trees were within 60 feet from the property lines using that GPS. And his GPS, he said, had a margin of error of give or take 30 feet. So um, I, I got John Hartland, who's the artistic arborist, lives on P9 Boulevard there. To Tom, Tom Trigger. Oh, he is the yeah. Trigger? Okay, yeah. okay, okay, great. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, just talking with him and asking um, if he'd help us. He, he, had, he was spitting out all kinds of things. He, I can tell he has a lot of knowledge, so I was just looking forward to going up there with him. So, so yes, he's agreed to help us cut the trees, and um, you know, upon approval, um, we figure out a work day with him and a couple of members and any other volunteers to go to the Will there be a cost to the town for his time? No, he said he volunteered. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, any, any questions? What are you going to do with it? Um, we're just going to fell them and leave them there. It's on a pretty steep slope. And, um, you know, John was saying and all the tree buds and everything make excellent fodder for deer and wildlife. And, um, you know, tree. Pilings and branch pilings make good habitat for other birds and everything. So we're just going to leave it there. You know, it's possible firewood for someone, but it's on such a steep slope, it, it'd be tough. It'd be tough to get. So I did notice that um, going up to the water reservoir there, there was just a lot, of, some recent work done, mm -hmm. right? 
yeah. it looks great it would be thing. But there's a lot of trees there and that I don't know. Yeah, I have to ask um the utility director what the thing was, but yeah, we had to do a bunch of work right. there. Did you know how clean the tank is? Because <laughs> Morgan, God bless him, pressure washed up thing for like a week. Oh, no, okay. So yeah. That's why it looks so clean up there and had road work done as well as, you know, taking down some of the trees around it. So um, that's probably a question for him. Right. It looks yeah. great. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it was very nice walking out there. It was a little wow, this is yeah. so much more accessible. And yeah, everything. stuff falling on the tank. And so it was yeah. part of the. Um, so we think it'd be a great little feature for the trail and hopefully attract um, some more hikers and everything up there and, and we'd love to. So, so the conservation commission everybody's behind the project side of it. So I mean I know you know I'm not speaking for the board members, but you know, typically the um, you know, these committees are put together to to run certain tasks, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like we're to have to do that. Uh, you know, we do have the watchful eye on the committees and, you know, but uh, I mean, it, you know, I guess my opinion on, on it, just like we've done with the recreation committees and other committees like that is, you know, they're tasked mm -hmm. with the job of, you know, in this case, uh, you know, making sure that we're managing our force you know, and you know, if this is something that the committee has uh, agreed upon doing, then, you know, I've had the backing of myself and, you know, and about the other members, but I'm sure it's yeah. Yeah. Because you've got the, 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 the town forester involved in it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've actually, I've walked up uh, twice, I think, over the last two years with the commission to that spot to talk about it, and so, yeah, I've seen I've seen the area. I mean, it may not be exactly the same trees that you picked up. Mm -hmm. in I feel like they've done their research and really thought through the plan and talked to all the right people. You know, this isn't just like rushing into it. this idea. So. On the agenda too, as part of that is the trail use, the one that um, Chris Bores drafted that trail use agreement that had to go because of the, um, between the town and Dennis Woods for, um, he sent me an email saying that you had to do it for, because of the state in order to receive grants. So I just had the draft in front of the select board tonight and give feedback in case they had any questions and all that kind of smell. So that was nice of them to do that. In the so he just said, he, um, it relates to the Bethel School Forest Trail System as a requirement of the state in order to secure grant funding to improve and expand the trails. And uh, so he just basically modified the sample and remain said, so that's also on here tonight. Can you get us a copy of that, Jim? Yeah, sure. Just for information? Yeah, I'll forward it to you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have you seen your bench up there? Yeah. yeah. I helped move it up there. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Who was that with? Who else was there? It was Mark and. Yeah. Mark and somebody else. There were at least two other people. Right. There. Yeah, I even had a picture of that. So. When I walked up to AJ, uh, you know, how to take a picture of me on the bench for the where am I? Oh, oh so, uh, nice. Yeah, I knew where it was. Yeah. So, <laughs> <I'm not laughs> it's a great spot. Yeah. yeah. So then you can and I would just, you know, stress if there if there is any resources off of the job that can be used for other means, if that is, you know, going into the um, to the wood shop um, for the kids, or you know, I, I understand that there are some of these areas that are it's probably more of a hassle to move the material out than just to create a new habitat there. But if there is any opportunities to salvage <laughs> materials, sure. On donation and things, so, you know, that's either going to the middle school or yeah, the well, we are talk. Yeah, talk about that. Yeah, great. Love Thanks to the like more attention. <laughs> maybe so. maybe trade you guys some uh, <laughs> some signs for the new property. Or something. Uh, I thought you were gonna say labor for materials. You know? Well, that's you. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay, we're good. Thank you. Yes. Any further discussion?
Mary, so anything with the Constitution Commission? So probably maybe in the spring there'll be some sort of um, ceremony for the Pleasant Street property, I think, or, or earlier than that, or? Well, we'll do something with town meeting again. Yeah. 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 I think a contest or something, oh, it's a great idea to get people involved. Yeah. Maybe not a contest, but at least open like it that. up and yeah, to get ideas and yeah. a couple of stories. Yeah. Great. Um, just as a slight aside, I don't want to take up a whole lot more time, but um, for the Forward Festival, mm -hmm. I had a quilt on display, and uh, this woman who grew up here, um, she moved away in the 50s, she had done all different scenes in Bethel. And one of those scenes was what she called Butternut Beach, which is directly across from that piece of property, and it's down from North Main, and that's where the kids in Bethel swam in oh, the wow. 40s and 50s. Butternut yeah. Beach. Yeah, so that's... Uh, I remember Carla told me a couple stories about Butternut Beach. So there is a lot of history. Yeah. It would be neat if we could, get, we could get some people to write up little things about it or yeah. like memories. Right. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. The uh, key vine and bank of repair. We have, um, through our ongoing FEMA projects, you know, just wrap up our last couple. Last time we, um, we had gone over the cohort one, right? Yeah. And this one is for the the engineering for the embankment repair on Peabine. Probably we've all seen the barrel of cones out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, there's, you know, there's more than meets the eye there for getting that fixed correctly. Um, and it, you know, probably most of it's happened over a large amount of time, not necessarily the FEMA event, but you know, we're able to get some of that done. <laughs> Let's break it up. Well, it, it got hit pretty hard. <laughs> <right here>. but, <laughs> So the, um, tonight we're awarding the bid uh, for the engineering portion of it, um, and then there'll be a separate bid for the ins for the work on that. Yeah. Um, when will that be? You know, or? when this is done, they have the right. end date on this is February, I think. So yeah, once they have that done, they'll put out the bid for the next. Maybe a spring or yes. early summer project yes. or something. So yeah. that yeah. will fall at the same time as well. This will fall with the additional traffic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's going to be not on <coughs> um, Peabine, it's going to be <laughs> the bank and that culvert. And we just don't have a choice because we're, you know, we need to get it done because of the time frame in which FEMA and the you might be able to get it done prior to water. If you're going for it, yeah, as soon as, I mean, it'll go out as soon as the engineering is done. I have a meeting with the culvert see somebody engineer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I know. Is that a movie? No, it's just a picture that they took. It's just uh, a copy of their proposal. No, no, Matt, it's a picture. So, exact location of the project? Oh, they're both, this one is the embankment here where it drops right off. Um, if you're headed towards um, Stockbridge using P-Line, then it's right up just past the um, yeah. park on the left, just almost across the sand pit on the okay. left, and it's right there, and you stop yeah, some cones, straight down. Some large cones there. Yeah, there. <laughs> that's, that's the um, slope up here. So basically, it's just eight right into the, the road. So the where the pavement is, it goes straight down. And then up the road a little further is where that, that big culvert is Colbert. jailed and needs to be replaced as well. So that was good out. We awarded that to a different engineer. And then there's this, which is a new bigger thing. So, um, so Du Bois and King was obviously was the only bidder. Um, we also, I did speak to our district, um, the district supervisor for District 4, and he spoke with some other people and were happy with the work that they had done, the slope repair. Um, and um, we'd also had spoken with D and K, and they're going to fix their price. Like this is their engineering charge. If anything changes, they're going to stick to their price. There will be no additions. Um, if anything changes, which is a nice option. So um, have some. And we also, I also asked um, just before, and they checked and said they felt like that was a good price for the um, for the solar for engineering. It wasn't you know, overinflated. Mm 
So it would be nice to get it awarded because that way we can have, I can have a meeting and we can get it started and uh, get the process going. So the sooner we get it out, the sooner we put out the bid, and the sooner in the spring the work can start. Okay. And I, uh, well, myself and Therese both met with two boys and came over the last few weeks and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, was guaranteed by the owner that he himself would oversee the project, you know, himself, uh, to accept the liabilities and that. So, uh, you know, we did have some issues with the Louisville Bridge mm -hmm. piece, um, but, uh, you know, everybody deserves a second chance and they've done a lot of work and this was a bid out process, so. And the only thing that, and this is a FEMA process too, as we found with the, uh, the Canal Bridge. You know, so. so, with that being, um, so um, with that being, mm -hmm. we, we had one bid on the engineering only. And do you have the bid amount on that, Lisa? Um, did you get? Did you have the bid amount on that? It's on our uh, seventy-eight thousand one hundred ninety-one. Yeah. Yeah. So I would entertain a motion to award the engineering of the P-line embankment repair to Dubois and King in the amount of seventy-eight thousand one hundred. Second. All in favor? Hopefully this is the last meeting that we'll have to talk about FEMA, too. <laughs> we're, we're so close. I mean, oh, no. <laughs> can't wait to take that chunk of time back. <laughs> so, um, you know, FEMA update-wise, we are, um, so all four of the, what we call the large gravel road uh, projects have been completed. Um, we did add some extra culvert work to one of the contractors for the end of the Camp Bell Road. Um, so they'll be doing that here next week or two. Um, yeah, he's upgrading from a temporary to a permanent fix. Yeah. Uh, and that will also help relieve uh, the issues that we have there. Well, with Mr. Cowder, I didn't get a call yeah. from him. I called back that one. So that, that'll take care of um, a majority of the issues with Calgary. Um, there'll still be some you know, localized cleanup. You know, they yeah. both of them. <coughs> Great bar. Yeah. So, so, the the so that would be, um, so the gravel roads wise, um, all four of them came in under budget um, from estimate. Um, I, I would say that all, well, there was um, two, two companies that did four of them. Yeah. Um, I, I think that. All the work that was done was um, done professionally and looks good. There's been quite a bit of feedback in regards to it. Um, as well as our town crews have been out there doing um, add-on pieces um, to the projects that have, has gone very well. So. Yep. Um, so as far as the gravel road stuff goes, everything is, is, has been accomplished. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Christine it, said she drove across the bridge. The, the Pinella. It looks good. Now the bridge it does look good. It looks very nice. is in. Um, so that has been accomplished, the temporary bridge. Um, and then these, um, I didn't happen to notice that the trees end up. Yep, gone. Yeah, the trees are out. You know, the few trees that we're able to move yep. are yes. gone. Yeah. And uh, Camp Brook Road is officially open on both sides of the mountain. We will say that ours was open first. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, as of what was it, um, last weekend? Yeah, Friday night or Friday, Friday night? night. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so we can go over the mountain uh, the easy way now. Um, so that's that's all been done. And then, what, you know, rough on the FEMA, what do we get rough on? Yeah. Then these ones that we have some engineering out. Um, Geico water ones. Um, the Geico, um, the pump station is done, and the boulevard, I think, maybe just getting finished. You have to, they're not done. I have not spent this week, but that's it. Just um, the engineering and planning for the um, replacement. Do we have any more work at the uh, 
here to Jim Floyd residence here with the property and that. And that is, yeah, that's called permanent work and we will be on hook for 10% of that. And uh, Chris Bump is aware of that. And he's gonna have to, once you decide, tell them that you have this permanent work and they have to come out and do an inspection. And, oh, it's a process, um, but probably that'll go out and just to get that re wrapped around there. We'd like to do some um, bankment reinforcement, but I'm not sure that's going to to see. So, so as far as the female stuff goes, I mean, we, the goal was to get everything done by the end of October. Um, it's pretty much all happened. Uh, there, there's a couple of these, these uh, random, you know, one area projects that will happen for next year. but. Uh, Everything's been done. Uh, you know, Teresa's now into the, Teresa had to take one day a week to go out to all of them to uh, GPS the pipes and, and measure every square foot, but yeah. um, we're getting through that. Um, so that, so that the, you know, the more update information we have on our paperwork, we'll be able to get our reimbursement faster. From, from, you know, so. Uh, so hopefully, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll start to see some cash flow. Any, any questions with regards to the female work? Um, so, so what, what is the next step for our work? So the next step is, um, in my mind, is putting out a bid to have a hydraulic study. Well, first of all, I need to talk to Army Corps of Engineers, because who knew that the state of Vermont has its own rules, and then the Army Corps of Engineers somehow also has a set of rules. So. Um, but it looks like the next step for us would be to put out, we need to have an engineering study done, um, or a hydraulic study. So an engineer would have to do that. It'd probably take them a couple of weeks. It's really just a computer module, but it, you need to have that in place so that you can design um, the permanent bridge. So we can do this at the I don't know. Um, uh, hopefully in the next couple of months, we can put that one out to bid for the, because we do have a couple of years, which is nice. So the hydraulic study will have to be done first, and then um, what I'd like to see is a um, design bill. I actually think that what we should do is the town could purchase a maybe bridge that would look just like the bridge that's there except wider, so that we could put, you know, so you could put a town truck or something, you know, over it. Because the town purchases a maybe bridge, it goes fast. The installation goes fast. Um, we don't have to be in the river other than maybe to put the block in to get the bridge over temporarily and that comes out. And then if we took some suggestions that were given that night from Jim and Dylan, um, you know, if you went a little bit farther, then you can go farther out of the river and so that if the river, as it comes up and floods, which it will do, um, the span will be higher. It'll be higher over the river and it'll be further away so anything that's erodes will you know, keep it in place. The great thing about a maiden bridge is they're, you know, not as expensive as we tried to pour like a concrete, you know, decking and that whole thing. It's going to be pretty expensive. I think that we could probably get up under two hundred thousand. We could get a purchase of maybe the wood expense. Like thirty some odd years, I think. And so I think that was when I it was a while, was a couple of months ago or so that I spoke to a gentleman about it, but. Um, Seems, you know, and we've all seen them in place for over 30 years. They're my last longer because there'll be no traffic. And there won't be any, and there also won't be any salt on it. Well, so, it could be gone in three years after the next one. Right. Oh, wow. But that was one of the thinkings <laughs> about it putting it up years. higher, yeah. you know, seeing it higher and longer. So it actually, as the river, you know, widens. So uh, the first step is going to be um, the hydraulic study. And, uh, and speaking to Army Corps of Engineers. But like I said, we have two years to get the permanent bridge in place. So um, at this point, um, we've got this one in place, so bought us a little bit of time, and I'd like to see it over the winter to get you know, the hydraulic study out. Plus, I want to start with our Corps of Engineers to see what hoops that we have to jump through um, with them that may be different than what the state requires. So, but for now, at least everybody has access to the house and, and all is. <laughs> the world right now. So, but that's the plan, I think, is to try to find a 
cost-effective way within a permanent bridge that I like the idea of expanding longer because as the river, as that bank changes, you know, yeah, you just need to be proactive. You know, Chris has done that with teamwork, making sure that ditches are deeper, that they're stone lines, we're trying to carry water. We're going to flood, so let's try to think a little bit more, you know, a little bit outside the box and how we can get a permanent fix. So that's what we're, that's what I'm thinking. So, you know, so right now, between now and early next summer, we'll be just doing the hydrologic I, study yeah. so that we can, you know, at this point, figure out what the river is doing. Or it'll also map out what the river will do over yeah. the next X amount of years so that we can see what the next step is on a permanent bridge or what type of bridge. Because what comes out of it is they tell you basically how high up the river needs to be, what the span should be, so they give us some ideas. And in my mind, it's Let's make the span a little bit bigger just so we're not doing this again in you know, five, ten years. So, we'll, um, but anyway, so I'm happy that you have access to the house and the four heating season and all that. So I'm really happy with that. I'm glad that you're happy with the project. It came out nice. I think that uh, Dylan um, North Road Excavation did a really nice job. Anybody have anything else FEMA related? Just one comment. Mm -hmm. Yep. I don't know what the material is they use on Christian Hill to go or how expensive it is, but I tell you what, that stuff needs to be built. Right. Sure. Is that two inch lines, I think? Two inch lines. Yeah, it was like It was inch lines. Yeah, I don't know really about it, but yeah. It came out of the bridge road board. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a tougher thing. Are you tougher? Yeah, because I have been traveling on lots of, well, I've, I've traveled on every gravel road and duffel them. And <laughs> That's uh, true. Which I didn't know before, but I know all of them now. Um, but I will say, you know, traveling in other towns right now that, you know, I know that our gravel roads were <clears throat> a bit of a disarray this spring and early summer, but I will say right now that they are in better condition, if not better than most of the towns in that area. Um, of course, I say that we're going to get two inches of rain tomorrow, and then Really choppy, but you know, but you know, uh, and that's not just the contractors that have done work for the FEMA. I mean, our our own town workforce has been up here working hard um, to get the other ones on the fire. Um, so I think we're heading in the right direction. Again, we can't turn the the whole ship in one year, um, but we'll we'll keep working on all these good roads um, for the next year and years to come. So. <coughs> all right. So we have the trail use agreement that uh, Jason was talking about that Chris scores. <clears throat> so I think that it was, but I just wanted you guys to see it in advance. Um, he just said he detached the draft of the Dennis Wood 10 year land owner trail use agreement for our review mm -hmm. um, and keep everybody up to date. This relates to the Bethel School Forest Trail System and the requirement of the state in order to secure grant funding to improve and expand the trails if they're on a combination of public and private lands. He said, I've modified a sample agreement that had all of the boilerplate requirements that they want in it. Mm -hmm. And um, just said, if you have any questions, you know, let me know. And that was him and uh, this is CC Thatcher on it. So I just thought you guys might like to see it um, before, you know, I wanted um, to give Chris some feedback. And um, I don't know if anybody had any concerns. It does, the way it's written, it certainly does look like it's pretty boilerplate, which was a nice attempt to kind of update it to include, um, you know, all the local references. So. There's nothing for us to sign. Right? No, I just wondered if you had any concerns. I mean, it was nice. He did. Um, down here, which I was happy to see. He, you know, there certainly was a landowner um, protection afforded via some statutes, which I was happy to see that he had afforded it here. And, um, Has Dennis seen I don't know. That's a question for Chris. I'll have to ask him. Um, I don't know. The only thing. Want to buy him? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's just the only thing I will say is that. You know, the signature, so it's either going to have to be signed by myself or the chair, um, and the 
recreation committee it doesn't have standing to bind the town, so that would be my only thing don't know about it. But um, I think, but I'll ask them if I'm But does anybody have any concerns? No. No, we've been doing a great job with the trail, the trail maintenance and the new trails that they're building right there. So it's, it's a nice improvement and nice to have them fighting in there. We have the meeting minutes for September 23rd. I would accept a motion to accept the meeting minutes of September 23rd. As written. To move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Just had a question we, we hadn't heard from. Uh, Fellow with the um, 104 North Main Street. Oh, really? No, I haven't heard anything from him. Okay. I asked him for it the information and I spoke to him on the phone. Okay. Yeah, that was solid waste board. Anything more of the keys in on the solid waste board? Other than uh, we've hired a new uh, manager, and her name is uh, Jennifer Brackman, and uh, Chet is going to resign. Retire. Retire. Yeah. <laughs> Don't be upset. <laughs> it was a nice article in the paper. It was. Uh, 
Yeah, we get some uh, recreation committee meeting minutes. I think she was going to come in today, but it looks like she got a lot of time to move to the 28th, I believe, earlier. So, for kind of an end of the year update on the pool. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. Energy committee, so there's a lot of committees busy here over the last couple of weeks. And they've rescheduled their appointments in November, I believe. Okay. Updates on the charging right. Questions in the, the general fund budget status. Um, Thank you for coming. Have a good night. It's so hard this time of year when you get used to like it getting dark at six o'clock and you're shrinking. Like, by the time you get to 8 o'clock, you're like, I'm like, <laughs> in the summertime, you're like wide awake, it's 11 o'clock, and then you can't get to sleep. Right now, it's like, ah. Oh. I'm like, man, what time is it? It's only 7 o'clock. You know? yeah. This feels like it's still late. But uh, getting into that. Um, I have a couple of questions. Oh. <laughs> Write my notes all night because then I got it. Yeah, I'm not sure. I was like, what are you the notes that I picked up? Oh, hold on. So I had, um, mm -hmm. there was a couple of items that were over. Um, Expenses or revenues or what? Um, they were under mm -hmm. costs. So we had, um, you know, I, I noticed that fuel, well, diesel was at 37% year to date. A little higher than we had budgeted. Mm -hmm. And I think he gets, he doesn't get regular deliveries. They right. come like every <laughs> month or something, yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, then, <clears throat> so that's my take on The other one I had, um, and I didn't know where he was at, but, um, you know, we'd be, obviously we don't haul in the salt yet, but. The, um, he just started, he actually did. But the gravel, I mean, um, the sand we had talked about. It looks like he's he's hauled in the budget amount of sand, but we talked about yeah. probably hauling in you know fifty percent more sand and using less salt. And does he plan to haul more sand in? Or? Yes, he does plan to haul more sand. They're going to be hauling in the next like in the rainy days. So, and he did okay. order some salt. Um, obviously, had that delivered so that he's not he was on hand, he's not caught with it, you know, without. So yes, he was planning on bringing in more. Sand. And what was what was Tell me about the the winter maintenance uh, maintenance um, sure. class pledge sure. that they went to about calibrating the yep, salt and what was it three three hundred pounds per mile per mile three hundred pounds per mile is what we and figuring that out you know we would have more than enough in the budget so. And I did speak to AJ about that, about calibrating um, the machinery, mm -hmm. and uh, he thought that they probably had everything on hand that they needed to, to be able to do that. So, um, I, and he's covering now on um, a couple days, so I'm definitely speaking to him about that. But um, and uh, yeah, I, we obviously did not give Alan a target number here to say you're going to spend 50 in sand and reduce your salt right. by. You know, he's obviously, um, he understands that's the plan. Mm -hmm. is, um, but he also, it's, you know, last year we got a lot of freezing rain and, and ice, so he's concerned um, about, you know, making that decision right now. So he's certainly going to haul on sand and then yeah. and, um, he's going to install and he's going to hopefully put it right here. Yeah, because I think we had, we have 130,000 between sand and salt. Mm -hmm. the road, on the road, and I think the goal was to try to make it 100 yeah. uh, and conserve 30 of it. That's your goal? Yeah. To conserve. Um, and then it sounded like, you know, from 
from what AJ and Mo were saying from going to that class that it sounds like it's very doable, especially on the salt and if we it sounds like our our calibrations on our trucks probably aren't right. Correct. So we're putting more salt in the road than we will need it. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll let him know. The application of it, you know, they went through extensively on, on the application how to apply the salt. Yeah. And, uh, which AJ and their, 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 now I would know more about it than I do because yeah. I'm not a, a So I'll, I'll let him know that between salt and sand, you're looking at him to spend 105000 between the two is what you're saying. Between salt and sand, right. you, want to spend, you want him to not spend $30,000 worth of basically right. salt. I'll let him know. I'd be curious if it's possible to find out what our cost per mile of maintaining camp workers. Right now, I'm not sure. Um, it might be able to, I mean, he might be able to keep tabs of that this year, right? I mean, he, yeah. He could keep tabs of certain roads. Mm -hmm. Well, um, and I do believe that they have access to some software that yeah. um, that would help them with that, that they need to have a refresher course in. Or, I mean, or even if it's not exact, if they said, you know, we put, just a you know, we think, you know, X amount of yards up there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and then and then it'll give us a little better information to go on the budget of the season. Sure, I'll ask. I'll make a note to just pick a road. Um, I mean, probably can't book probably the better road to do it on. Right, right. sorry. Mm -hmm. When you're talking salt usage, right? Or the downtown, you know, or, you know how much material Well, downtown. you know, maybe we'll do both as because yeah. Allen could track Camp Brook and Morgan can track the downtown. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that'd be interesting, right? You know. I have more traffic even doing the salt application with more than spread. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a yeah. And uh, you're going to be able to triple it on. Mm -hmm. But you can really. Yeah. He didn't use as much salt last year. I think the majority of your salt went on camp. Right. Yeah. 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 I guess we're more talking about how the yeah. best way to apply it, yeah. his spread won't do that. Right. He did tell me that. But it seems as though Allen's will do that. Yeah. So maybe. The food is not the food. The building to figure out for the shelf. Oh, that was my question. So I was looking, so we, under the repairs, parts, and tires for town owned equipment, mm -hmm. so we're, we're currently at 46%. Yep. Uh, so I don't know how, how it, it's over budget so based upon the percentage of budget we've yes. gone through. Of course, sometimes some of those repairs are done up front rather than going. Um, Does that number reflect any of the added repairs that we talked about doing in lieu of the new crop gonna, that we didn't get? I'm going to ask him because I had told him specifically not to post those to that line, and if he needed help with right. coding, he could let me know. But he has had. Because it almost seems like it is. He's before. had the. Um, one ton has been in the shop, and he had some work done on it. And uh, he mentioned passing what it was, but honestly, it was. I remember looking at the invoice for that. It's probably in the, in the big stack that yeah. we got there. Um, it was necessary maintenance. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was but there were break, um, it was. not break lines, break pads, and. Yeah. and uh, Necessary stuff. It wasn't yeah. part of the package that we talked about with right. the other. Uh, and before. I will tell. And I know he also he was sending um, the trucks. Uh, I think it was last Thursday that they went up to HP Fairfield to have some work done on them. And um, he's still getting. He's got his two plows ordered, and they'll be here. Um, so he just he's feeling really good about winter. He feels like he's coming into the winter in better shape than he has been in the last two years. He's got tires, he's got, you know, putting the working and he's feeling good about that. They end up doing a bunch of the work themselves on the loader, taking it apart and doing the um, radiator and some of the other work. They end up doing that themselves, which saved us money. Okay. And um, so, but I would like to know to ask them about that. Chris. Um, yeah, I just didn't know where they were at with that or yeah. if that number reflected on it. I've spoken to him about that, about he is on his schedule 
to get those repairs done. He was aware that the money was allocated from the capital fund. And yeah, that, that was pretty much the deal that we made with them. Yep, absolutely. You know, not getting a new truck, but taking a portion of that money and using it towards updating the necessary pieces of equipment. So. I'll look at the detail repairs and tires. But I do know that he um, had purchased tires too, so I know that's in here. Um, yeah. Anything else with maybe the budget at this point or um, any of the other? No, if I could just take a quick second to Two Rivers, give you an update on the Two Rivers. Uh, project that's going on. I went to a, the uh, meeting of the commissioners in September uh, 25th, and they're, every so many years they go through the entire regional plan and they update it, uh, make changes uh, as towns grow and, and things change within the towns. And so we're looking at, they're looking at the final list of changes that they've made for this year. And the controversy that has arisen with this is uh, based on whether or not Two Rivers was founded and is by statute um, a group that dictates policy as opposed to suggesting policy, uh, using words like shall and will instead of words like should and, you know, as much as possible, things like that. So there's a big Ruhaha going with that, especially from the town of Hartford. Um, the, the lady who runs the planning commission in Hartford wrote this nine page dissertation citing every statute that was used to create two rivers and, and how she gave examples of how it was not meant to be something that dictates policy. It's in fact in them because they've made some changes that are going to affect the Coochie Gorge commercial area where they have all the tourist stuff and they, they're not going to be able to utilize some of that in the way that the town has already approved to, you know, to use it. And then also the town of Bradford has the same thing going on. There's a strip of highway coming out of Bradford that they have designated as commercial um, you know, by the planning commission and the select board and everybody. And, and Two Rivers is basically saying, no, you can't, you can't do what you want to do there. So they're up in arms about that. So, that's why these changes haven't gotten voted on. It keeps being pushed out uh, further and further of having these kinds of discussions. So the next, the next meeting is, is scheduled for October 30th. I think they're going to try and vote on it again. Um, okay. Are there any potential issues locally for like us? Yeah, the only thing that, uh, would, that impacted Bethel was the town plan for Bethel had the Locust Creek area um, set up as a hamlet, and Two Rivers uh, regional plan did not reflect that, so they changed their plan to reflect what we had in our town plan. That's all. Okay. And that uh, impacted that one. I think it'll be really interesting to hear the outcome of this because um, I I'm in agreement that. Um, I don't, my personal opinion is that they, that I don't believe that they should be setting policy either. Not when it, that's the state, that's the town's job, and, and sometimes you vote on zoning, so, and I like, obviously, Two Rivers and the work that they do, but, um, you know, you'd be up in arms, too, if we were banking on, you know, expanding your commercial district, and then it kind of, so it'll be interesting to see how it, you know, by Joe Paul, I'm very interested in hearing the outcome of that, because um, I, I understand, and they do so much good, and um, the boy, you know, you're charged with the, your own town, it would be interesting if somebody else would come in and say you can't do that. I mean, the state does it all the time. <laughs> and we're in the middle of the exchange up in Randolph, too. So yeah. The oh. folks in Randolph were there at the meeting, and they were very upset oh, um, right. about the, some of the definitions and the wording, in the, not so much in the changes, but in the actual plan that Two Rivers has. That, calls out that exchange and, and what it has to be, how it has to be set up. And, you know, you know, and anything that requires Act 250, Two Rivers is, is automatically an interested party. So they're in there pitching against 
you know, development of that area. And that's hard too, right? For them to go up against them. You want two rivers right. backing you in that because they're right. not opposing I mean, yeah. I, I always, in, in, that's before I got on the board and knew really too much about two rivers, I mean, I always, I always assumed what two rivers did is they worked as a liaison between the town and the state right. in either direction. So that could either be towns looking for their footprint or legislation going up, mm -hmm. and for you know, and for the legislators to use two rivers as a funnel down yeah. to the town, but it doesn't seem like that's exactly the way that it's being done, and that's probably why Hartford and some of those it's gotten a little back bigger. Are, it's gotten a little bigger now than just that. Right. That's why it's great that Paul's going yeah. and keeping yeah. us employed because it's. I mean, there's so much information. It's hard to be in the know on everything. So I think it's great that. Thanks, Paul. Yeah. Oscar? Hello? So, Oscar, um, I, next time, maybe for the 28th meeting, like the Friday before, if you could give me your reports, but I'm not get that. How long you are, okay? Hey, you know, Kelly usually does it, but since she's out, and then you can do that. Sure. Um, did you? Were you just here to listen, or? I was here to entertain any questions, answer any questions, then. Forward. You know, if you guys want to hear from me and how things are going, some, some quotes that I have, or some of the stuff that I've learned. I don't have a really good set agenda, so being that this is my first time meeting with you guys in this capacity. Um, so I guess I'll entertain any questions you might, you might have. Really short questions. I guess we'll throw it back at you first. That's all. So what what do you have for questions in regards to, you know, you've had some time on the job right now. Uh, based upon, I guess, I guess the question I would have is what questions do you have for us based upon on the expectation that we have set and now having some time on the job and, you know, either achieving those ex expectations or meeting more guidance, or all right. I'll, I'll throw this at you. So since I took over, I've answered 94 calls. I've made uh, 207 stops. Um, uh, I see that there's an issue of uh, speed of, of traffic on Camp Brook Road right now. It seems to be since um, since the Rochester. Issue of the road opening, it, it's a regular drag strip. And I'm using my own language because I was stopping people for the, today for 20, 17 over 40. Um, I, do get, I do cover the Gilead Bridge project, uh, trying to get people to slow down for the construction going on there. Um, since since I started, we do. I do have. I, do, I did stop somebody for DUI. Did um, one of my calls was an underage drinking party. Um, I've asked, we've asked for everything from aggravated assault, aggravated, not an aggravated assault, but an aggravated stalking, in which that's now in the state police is taking over that investigation. I have uh, done one good truancy case with the school. The school is great. Your school staff is awesome. I want to interject that my uh, my daughters had come home. We were talking this weekend, and they said, "Of course, this is their language." The new police guy came to the uh, uh, and did some stretching with us during the uh, PE class. Oh, the look on your face! He's doing push-ups and stuff. So yeah, I did push-ups with him, and they're all looking at me going, "He's doing push-ups." So it's you know good that 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 involvement with the school. Because um, that definitely was one of the expectations that we had laid out there was to make sure that we had a relationship with the school. And they, they're great. Uh, the kids here are great. Um, now, is there any, and I don't know how it's set up in this town, but, you know, typically, most towns in any way, you have, you know, some sort of police identity that's a department or a, or a constable or something else. And then the school has their own enforcement piece of a truancy officer or mm -hmm. are you uh, subjecting a, like a student resource officer or an SRO? Well, it, it, it all changes every school set. Yeah. Yeah. 
They're not required to have an SRO. No. Or a state or a school yeah. resource officer. Some schools do, and the high schools. But what I so I just didn't know where that guidelines like right now with truancy. Oh, does that well, have a town function or is that a school function, function or? It used to be back. Yeah. Back in the day, they used they used to appoint a truancy officer. They still do. They still do. Do they? A truancy yeah. officer for both. And it, um, it's uh, Andrew and or Andrew. Owen. So they use the principal, but they don't actually have a truancy officer. No. no. And under the, under the statute, I don't read the grade of the constable is the town truancy officer. Mm -hmm. um, and they did reach out to you about it. Yeah, they had, a, they had an issue where they didn't want to go to the place alone. Um, so I assisted them. Yeah. And they're very appreciative of it. We do, we do coordinate with them to help them uh, with their evacuation drills, providing safety and security for the students, uh, with the, along with the fire department. They have a big uh, response to that. Um, one of the things I've done is talking, uh, I go around and check for residents, houses that they, they leave the town for a lengthy period of time. We have a few that go to Florida. I'll go and check the houses for them. I call community checks. It's part of the community watch that they have over on North Street, uh, San Sanders Road. One of the concerns I'm having uh, is this speed sign. I think the bane of our It is definitely. The batteries last like what, a day and a half? We need, we, need, we need either to get them to be solar powered <clears throat> or replace those batteries outright mm -hmm. because they're not lasting. I would think they more beneficial and cost effective to go with the solar power things off. I don't think we need to replace the whole sign. You can buy an external solar power source to charge the batteries on those speed signs. Although there's new, oh, there's actually new requirements now that the signs, oh, it's crazy. Like they're not supposed to flash repeatedly, mm -hmm. and if you're under, they're not. If you're under the speed, they're not supposed to do anything. So it's not supposed to be working and so we have people I think we can access like, between six and eight thousand dollars from grant um, that's sitting out there in the ether uh, for us we talked about this a little bit with um, when Mark is constable now that we kind of worked out with the state I was able to talk to somebody up there who got um, Oscar hooked up with Rutland so we're acting as a sub grantee so we're hoping that once he's underway we can reach back out to Jim um, Bashar, something last yeah. name, his last name, and see if we can't access that money because I have pricing on those signs, which is old now. But um, Greg had given me before he left. But so our hope I know Greg was looking into the right. solar and capabilities because we had talked about that. And this is <laughs> he gave me the pricing and the, the make of the sign and stuff because so we're hoping that once you know Oscar now that he's participating in that, that we'll be able to get that money because the state agrees that we earned it but they couldn't allow us to have it because of the time we weren't participating in a grant. So we're yeah. hoping that we can do that so that then Oscar's right, that they be solar powered. And mm -hmm. is that now it's, you know, you're always trying to keep the batteries changed because they just don't hold the charge very well. Uh, the other thing is too, um, Oscar had sent me some information and then I have gone online and done some of my own search. And I don't know, in the next couple months after FEMA, after the audit, after a couple things here, I'm working on a job description for Oscar, as well as, you know, the road crews and draft, and we're working with those, so everybody will have job descriptions, and I'm um, sure Oscar's been helpful, and he also sent me all of his training certificates, so I did put those in his personnel file, too, which was also very helpful. Uh, we just to recap a bit on, on the uh, government highway safety grant. We did get 16 extra hours eight hours DUI enforcement and eight hours occupant, what they call occupant protection. Basically go around and look for people for safety issues like no seatbelts, speeding. And it's a very intense eight hours of traffic enforcement. You have to make so many stops. You're going to make so many contacts. 
and while How we long does that last? answer that, but we get reimbursed. How long does that last for us? Or is that like a year thing? Or is it it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a year. I thought it was semi I thought it was like for a period of so many months. So 16, 16 extra weeks, sorry, 16, 16 extra hours a week for a year? I don't think it's a year. I'm not going to argue with it. I don't think it I, is. I, 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 can, I can probably pull up the email. For some reason, I think that they used to, remember they did like click or ticket and then yeah, but, to, but that was also the weird they used to click with their ticket this, and DUI. It's, it's, it's structured different yeah. than what we're used to. Is yeah. I went all through Cappuccino yeah. and Rutland County and don't quote either one of us, yeah. but I think it's a year, and I think it started, it's, it starts, ends 9, 10, 20, 20. Oh, does it? I believe, I, I, that rates, that's what oh, my eye right. my eye saying. So it's almost a year. Yeah. Uh, so essentially the town is getting 36 hours of patrol a week. Um, so how do you do that? Do you, do you spend, do you just separate and say, I'm going to spend one eight hour a day just I know it's not an answer, but you say I'm going to spend two hours a day throughout the week doing that. I don't have a system. No. No. I just, you can do it either way. Yeah. Yeah. So you do it I can do two hours of OP, do eight hours regular, go, and let's say it's nighttime, turn around and do four hours of DUI until 1.30 in the morning. As long as I don't go over that 16 hours. So now on the DUI, you and I were chatting a little bit about DUI cases. Yeah. A couple of weeks ago, and there, you know, the the strings that are attached to a DUI offense are long. You know, in the case of you know, if you pull somebody over for DUI, then you got to follow through that whole formal process of the courts, and you know, which is more than eight hours with the court. You know. Yeah. So, um, and it might be something that going forward that we may have to um, budget some. Well, and that in our budget is, is him having some administrative time because what's happening now is even when he's not on one of these special programs, if let's say he pulled somebody over in town for a DUI, and I can't remember how many hours do we have a lot of down? 20? 20. 20. 20. So if he's got 20 hours a week right now associated with us, and he pulls somebody over for DUI, that formal process is going to probably take out a majority of his time for that week, you know? Um, somehow, you know, it can take. Um, it can take. Uh, let's say, okay, I pick up a, a, a person with DUI. Processing can take anywhere between an hour to two hours, unless there's like major injury involved and it gets extended. And then you get all the paperwork done, and then you got to go back and you got to write up your your app, your supplement affidavit, and you got if you get discovery, you got to process all your discovery. I mean. This whole DUI could end up costing, I'm not going to say this aren't costing in reference to money, but in time, it could be easily a, a six or eight hour endeavor when you try to totalize it all. Okay. Um, and, and not only that, but you have other stuff too. I mean, you have to document, 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 and you have to administrate time. And fortunately, we've been able to, I've been able to offset that and juggle it around. So uh, I try not to be in the office. Um, that's my, my office is that, is that thing with the big billboard on there, the blue lights, that's where I try to be most of the time. So can some of that grant money go towards the administrative, administrative stuff or? Um, grant I would like to say yes. Strictly, yeah. I'd like to say yes, but when you, when you, 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 you do the agreement to do so much and it, that's so many hour period. So there is some administrative offset that, that I do have to pull out of the rest of 20 hours. But fortunately, with the way I've got things set up, I can do a lot of that roadside sitting in. If you ever drive by and I'm doing this, you know, you're driving by and I don't say hi and I'm looking at my laptop, it's usually because I'm either doing a crash report or a DUI or an affidavit or just doing up my reporting to keep, keep you guys abreast of what's going on and be able to document what I'm doing but like in general, you know, when we, you know, when we look at the budget, we see 20 hours in there, and we're assuming that's 20, 20 hours of patrol time. But, yeah. but the more strings that are attached to various different instances, you know, the more yes. time it's going to take away from him. And it just seems like you know, more strings get attached to these things nowadays, and it's probably something that 
we want to look at that 20 hours today is not the same as 20 hours 10 years ago. No, it's not. Um, the paperwork, so, the quantity paperwork when, and I can't believe it's less than any. This is the stacks I used to see of the police department taking to the um, state's attorney's office was just almost insane, you know, to, to see the stacks of paper that everything you have to get and, and stuff. And, and I know you're gonna, you know, now the lady let me submit it electronically, but before it was, it's crazy. And it does take a lot of time to get all the You never know through. what he might run into, you know. I mean, and it's not like he can say, oh, no, I can't. no, I can't. I'm going to let this person off because no. then if something happens, we're liable for it. Or it could be, you know, he could pull somebody over in town and then discover drugs or something and then well, have to go through that whole process. And here's, let, is, I'm going to use your whole drug thing. Let's say I do pull somebody over and I find 695 bags of heroin and so on and so on. I have to. They're going for 20 hours, like that. Yeah. It almost instantaneously, because the next day I gotta come in and I gotta inventory it all. I've gotta document it all. I've gotta write my affidavits. I gotta investigate witnesses. I'm not trying to scare you, but that could feasibly happen. But fortunately, with a mobile office yeah. and a satellite, my, my main office is that cruiser in the office is my satellite office. That's a spot for people to come and see me. Um, graciously, I've got my little cubby wall now. It's not that I like it. Um, that I bring you, I think, Chris, you make a valid, a valid issue there, but down the road. And I know our main appointment of him is really to do speed enforcement, um, animal control, and then have a community presence. But we just have to, you know, there are some of those instances that will happen that will take away from this time. And it might be something that we may have to think about a little more. I know this past budgeting, we turned down the extra hours, mm -hmm. but we might want to start thinking about the 20 hours is what we want to patrol hours. How many hours are we willing to give a week to do the administrative functions? Is that an extra eight or, you know, what is that to right. make things flow? Or we're going to end up losing, instead of 20 hours of patrol, it might be 10 hours of patrol, 10 hours of ministry. You know, yeah. how do we want that to look? And exactly. we will have to start looking at that. In all fairness, I, you, can, uh, you can tell me, Oscar, don't you do any of that other stuff? Throw me into traffic. I do all kinds of traffic stuff, but in reality, the traffic stops is what generating the other stuff. The bigger yeah. stuff, right? Yeah. Sure. It's, it's, if, if I make a stop, and, hello, nice to meet you guys. <laughs> if I make a stop, and I walk up to that car and go, huh, have you had anything to smoke or drink lately? And the first thing you're gonna see is on my video, I'm going up there, I already suspect that they're drunk. They're, I can't let them go. I have to cross, I have to go through that process. Right. And if, let's say I make that stop, and. Here's that little plastic baggie on the, on the console with a little heart shape. Gee, that looks like a heroin bag. Do I let it go? Or do I keep doing what a, a police officer should do and investigate further? Is there any opportunity, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. No, I was, but if you do make a stop, let's say a traffic stop, you're in town, in the middle of the limit, somewhere in the Bethel, and you make a stop of a DUI or a suspected person on carrying drugs or something like that. At that point, can you turn it over to the state police or do you have to follow through on that? Or? It's, my, it's my fish. Yeah. It's under the rule. So you, you can't catch, catch it off. You clean. <laughs> and plus, I'm the investigate. I'm the initializing officer. So if you take the mechanics of the case, I'm the one that created the problem cause of the stop. State's attorneys like to see that guy follow through the case and bring it to a, to a adjudication of medication and it, it's really not a good idea to keep pawning stuff off like that. I mean, I'm, it's not have, statutory, it's just you're saying it's right. just kind of unwritten. It's unwritten rule. Right. Plus, but the VSP will still do stuff when Oscar's not on duty. They oh gosh, yes. Duty, so yeah. They'll still, they, you know, if, they're called to. Well, but, but when he's on duty, he's the scapegoat yeah, for them. Exactly. That means they I forgot that, right? Yeah. Well, no, not always. There's because remember when you guys hired me, you hired me because I had a, a higher training level. Okay, 
there's still stuff I can't do that I I will have to give to the state police. If one of them, one of those incidents happened just recently, I can't do those investigations. But anything that I'm capable of doing and, and within the scope of my training, they want me to do it. If I can't do it, or if I'm doing OP, Governor's Highway Safety, they know I'm not going to take calls if I'm doing Governor's Highway Safety. Because that's a different type of a, of a uh, environment for me or patrol. So there is a way that I can back out, but it's not very well liked if I, if I can be an all fair. Yeah. They, want you, they want to see me do my job. And I would agree with you. I, I've noticed lately in town, and maybe it's just because it's for season and maybe because we fix a lot of roads. I have noticed that the traffic is flowing. Somebody blew by my house last night at a, I can always tell how fast they're getting up. And someone went by there, it had to have been upwards of 60 miles per hour. Like that. I will say this much because I did start back in May and coming over when this stuff hit you guys, uh, the roads are 100% better than when, when they started. Oh, I mean, yeah. I'm very impressed enough on how that was done. We're very well handled. I'm not trying to toot your horn, but it's true. I mean, yeah, very well done. Fingers crossed. They say that yeah. I'm just kidding. Yeah. We may be tested out a little bit um, this week. I am making traffic stops. I, I am writing tickets, writing a whole lot of tickets. So um, that's at 207 traffic stops. And out of that 207 traffic stops, I think I broke. 63 tickets and 35. Uh, I hope I actually can pull them up, but if you ever wanted to know those stats, let me know and I can give them to you. I think they'd like to see that in their packets. You know, just kind of a shortened view of, you know, we broke X amount of tickets or whatever for next month. Um, for next month? Next packet, I mean. Yeah. So the end of the. I know I'm always interested in seeing, you know, how, how many people you pulled over versus how many. Came away with a ticket. Oh, sure. Um, and I'm also usually, cons I, I used to like to see maybe maybe in the cases of the ones who did get ticket to, you know, what was the speed enforcement of those tickets? Because, you know, we used to look and say, oh, geez, you know, 62 and a 25, you know. There's other saw some of those. And be careful of that because there's other circumstances of reasons why someone may not get a ticket and why somebody will get a right. or not. Oh yeah, I have one of the one of the unwritten things that cops do is they build um, sources of information, and there's certain. I'm not saying I'm doing it, but in the future, if I'm investigating something, I want to try to get information on something. It's been that that cop would write that person a ticket, right? So, or I guess I guess I'll rephrase my my comment to. I think like a total sheet to say. Over the last, because we do it every two weeks, right? Oh, so, over the last two weeks, I had whatever, 15, I, I stopped 15 people yep. and I gave three people a ticket, right? Yeah. Right. And I don't need to know who they were or what they no, were. No, no, they don't want to know who they were. But then the other thing is I that. I can't tell you who they were. Yeah, they don't want to know. But before, Mark had a, like when he did pull somebody over, regardless who gave him a ticket or not, he used to say, like, you know, 42 and a 25, and then at least you kind of knew yeah. like what the speeds were going on yeah. down, you know. That's interesting, Oscar. Um, that kind of gives them an idea of what they. Nothing and, you know, so you know, like didn't, didn't really need to know if you had given the ticket or who they were, or license plate number and all that stuff. But just. Um, and I see on here there's no fine revenue right now. It takes a while for the state to kind of process. They're usually a couple months behind. Okay. By the time we get it, so. I've wrote 105, uh, 105 total records. There's 207 for the whole agency. Total records that don't have anything associated with it. That's the total pre-adjudicated value of what I've written so far. That's the number of, I can show you guys if you want to see it. Uh, that's the number of tickets I've wrote, 63. That's the number of mornings I wrote, 31. Mm -hmm. That's the average age of the person that, I, that I've been stopping since I've started here. And I can actually scroll down and tell you the racial, racial data collection and statistics as well. I've stopped 67 males, 33 females, no unknowns. Um, I've stopped two Asians, 1.93 blacks, uh, and I primarily target white people. 
So, you, right? <laughs> Looks like it. Uh, I mean, I think <laughs> that's what, if you want something like that, I can so I think that on my end of things, you know, and I, you know, I like this information at the top where it basically says total traffic stops, you know, is this, this is how many tickets or this is how many warnings, because believe it or not, we get calls. So, you know, and, and you know, they say, you know, you know or, or usually you get the old, you know, you know, might want to bring your dog back in, or, or those, you know, those talks. But at least I can say, hey, I've been looking at it, and it looks like Austin's been giving more warning than they so, uh, You know, at least, yeah, because usually we get sometimes that. It gives us yeah, it gives us something to fire back at. Nine hours, just knowing and helping me out. Yeah. I have to. Thank you. All, all you guys do is make a hole in the ground. No, I don't get it. No, I feel like this. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, there he Here we go. Yeah, here we go. I do not. That is true. So, have a good night. Other than that, I think, you know. Yeah. Thank you, Ava. So, what I've done is I'm able to pull up most of my operational statistical data upon request, and I can quarterly give you reports. I can give you monthly reports. Yeah, she got home this weekend. And I, it went well. I'm sorry, you guys didn't see it. Yeah, for a few weeks, but he's going to see what she's supposed to do. I do see it. So, I know, I think I'm happy for it. On the record, on average, the people that are getting stopped in this town, 95% of the time are doing 15 miles an hour over close to speed limit to get a ticket. Right. Uh, the only times those are that is reduced is the very right front of the elementary school. I lower it down there. Mm -hmm. The congested area on Main Street and on obviously the bridge construction zone. Yeah. Other than that, when I go to court to, to bring these people to adjudication, I like to be able to tell the judge and go, Your Honor, they're doing 15 over speed limit. Yeah. Uh, and I do give a lot of breaks. Uh, there's, without a doubt, I give a lot of breaks. And in some cases, you guys might go, Why are you giving breaks? Well, I give town of Bethel residence breaks. But I'm able to I'm able to know when I'm given the breaks and document that I've given them breaks. Well sure as soon as you give a you know, don't let anybody fool you. If you've been issued a warning by a trooper by the time when they bring up yeah. uh, you know look you up the second time they already know how many warnings you've been given. So um, oh, yeah. you know, they track all that stuff. And so I mean it's just whatever um, whatever um, general information that you can give the board on a you know bi-weekly type endeavor. It just gives us information to answer questions when when we, when we receive them. You know, we're we're your frontline defense and yeah. yes. um, because you know we're on that note have you heard anything? So is, is there anything that you've heard that I could be doing different outside of getting more breaks to some people? I don't think it's positive. Do, do we have to keep the camera on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I would just say overall, um, you know, and I would say overall, there's you know, there's always going to be pushback. Um, I, I think um, I think there are, there are those in town that see the added resource that you bring, um, and I'll just throw an example out there. It might be. Uh, like Champlain Farms, you know, they they have some customers sometimes that yes. are the ones that they don't they don't want hanging out up front. And in the past, they've um, tried to make those customers leave and have reached out to um, law enforcement in the past, and nothing has happened. And they know now that uh, you know they pick up the phone and you show up and you deal with the, the issue and it goes away. Um, so so there's those positives, and then. Then there, are, I think there are some people that, now that you have a little larger footprint because of your qualifications that you bring, that they're not used to seeing some of those offenses being taken by by you. So when they hear that information, well, well, what's he doing doing that? You know, he doesn't need to be doing that. But they maybe not fully understand that. You know, in the past we had to hand those off. Now, yeah. you know, now we have to see those through. So I think there's some of those adjustments going on. Um, I mean, and then there's always going to be those handful, you know, we had that one 
-hmm. just recently. You know, yeah. It's going to be those handful of ones that th there's going to be an issue, even though there's really not an issue. With, right. you know, so I don't know. Has anybody else heard anything? Or Paul's sitting here. Paul, Paul, Paul's in Paul's a quick well, meditation at this point. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, don't say anything, don't say anything. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll talk to us. I was going to say, you know, you know, 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 know the form, though. I didn't know the form. So I, I don't see any, you no. know. I would just say the, the, the more feedback, general feedback you can give us. That yes. Or keep us in the loop on the, the better yes. resource we can be to help get information out into the public when we get those questions. So, other than that, I think things are going well, and you know, it was nice to hear my my daughters talk about that you were at school. You know, and those, are, those are some of the you know, talking points that we get on earlier. So. Yeah, we get a lot of positive feedback. Yeah. Yeah. There's always negative. Oh yeah. In some cases, it's fair to say I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't get some complaints. Yeah. It's Go the same as here now. Slept for them. You just got your own bad story. You got to take good with the bad. If you don't carry firearms. So, so, all right. Do we have the only other thing was, um, if you haven't yet given me your stuff about the junk ordinance, then you Ooh. know if you want to let me know what's that. I'm going to get the D tree to kind of compile. I think I have had three people give me their stuff and two are missing. So that way, um, when she comes back. Speaking of this week or next week, that she's going to give, um, you know, we'll talk about she's going to put it all on that document. Yes, sir? If I have intercepted some illegal burnings, I have to go with those. Yeah, turn them over to the um, fire chief or the, um, yeah, turn them over to the fire chief. And they'll yeah. do his investigation if they need it and can issue missile tickets and all that. Oh, I, I was going to issue, okay. Yeah, just talk to Dave. Dave, take care of it. He will. And ask him too, just ask him how he wants to handle it. Because some, the funny thing is, is the fire award from here is not generally the person that people call. So it could be any firefighter, but usually Dave's pretty good about um, reaching out and letting people know. So just touch base with Dave all today to see how he wants to deal with moving forward. So next time I smell some laboring plastic, maybe I'll call Dave. You can. Good, yeah. Strong at that every other day. Yeah, then you should call him because they can, he can actually go out, believe it or not, he can actually sample what's there and send it away and get it out and everything. Yep. So you'd be surprised the powers the fire chief has. It always amazed me when I read them in statute. They actually yep. carry a big stick. Okay. But certainly I reach out to Dave anyway, just okay, so to do anyway, so chat with him. Alright, I won't I won't enforce twenty two oh four then. Yeah, just well talk to him about what he wants to do. Might be nice for you right. too to work in um, unison on yeah, that. Sure great. Anything else? Alright. Anything else to come before the board this evening? Adjourn. Adjourn. Dave's sleepy. He's had a rough day. He's had a rough day. Thank you.